He's making Chinese candy. Some of it we just purchased. Really good stuff. Making Chinese candy. And here's Hannah purchasing some of the finished products, Chinese candy. <laughs> Fresh as it gets. We have fish. We have chickens, ducks, geese, rabbits. You can buy rabbits if you want to eat rabbits. That's pig eyes on her side. <laughs> Video is on. Tell him to explain what it is. Lamb intestine. I think I'll pass. Uh, Hello? Hey, they say... Hello? If you take pictures, you're going to pay for it. Tofu. 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 <laughs> Noodles. What are these, Hannah? What are these made out of? I don't know. I think it's rice. Hey, you can't get it. Oh, it's a drama. And then this on the right? Yes, the same, just different shapes. Filled with meat? Yeah. I think it's sausage. Hmm. Yeah. And then what is he giving her right there?
吧？哦，豆荚。煎饼。嗯、少加点辣椒就行了。So this is kind of like the Chinese version of a Mexican burrito. Mm, cilantro. And green onions. And green onions. Some sausage. Delicious. 多少钱？六块。好，谢谢。嗯，好。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再见。再啊，跟啊，跟你坐一块儿。哦，跟啊，跟你坐一块儿。嗯，好。嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，嗯，
as snacks. They're uh, vacuum sealed and already cooked, ready to go. Then on the right of that plate, on the skewer here, we have three chicken heads, the beaks and everything. And we got that from a street vendor who was barbecuing all kinds of meats. They're fairly common. I told my wife I would try it. She swears that it's good. So I'll see. But there you have it. There are some interesting foods to be had in this China. This is a barbecued wow. rabbit head, which we're about to eat in China. You can see the eye. And then going, there's the teeth. Gotcha. Open up yeah. his mouth. Yeah. His, you can actually see his tongue. There's his tongue right there. Doesn't that look appetizing? My wife says it's delicious. Her mom is a vegetarian. Nose. <laughs> So, uh, there's his nose. I told her I'd try it just to try we are at the Beijing food market. Cooked scorpion on a skewer. Delicious. Tastes like shrimp. I highly recommend it. More scorpions. These are some big black scorpions. We have other types of bugs. There's some smaller scorpions that I ate. We have some locusts. Centipedes. I'm gonna eat some locusts here. The centipede, I would have eaten it, but it's over way overpriced. Without eating some fried insects, we have scorpions, in this case locusts, there are centipedes, although technically not an insect, but some very exotic delicacies here. And so here we go. This is locust, fried locust on a stick. I already ate some scorpions. Tasted like shrimp. We'll see how this tastes. Mm -hmm. Crispy, crunchy, pronounced flavor. This actually tastes like it has a seafood flavor, uh, kind of fishy. I think I like the scorpions better. This is a little more greasy, a little more fishy. Scorpion, it did taste like seafood, but it, it was shrimp. This tastes kind of fishy, I guess. But not bad.
Okay, we're still at these carved Buddhas in the caves, and this is a very, very interesting cave here. Unbelievable. Look at this. Magnificent. How they did this is a great mystery to me. huge Buddha and then there's a smaller one on each side so they just chiseled the rock right around that to make that kind of like Mount Rushmore I guess same cave you can see on the floor of this cave they have these carved out I guess they're used as steps unless they were carving it out and they were planning to use it for something else Here's a round one. All these blocks and then there's a etched out cave right there, but there's nothing inside. So this is probably what the original wall looked like, although I do see some carved indentions there that they were probably going to put more carved images. So there's the before. And here's after. This is the finished product right here. So you can see they just carved that right through the wall there. Amazing. Look at the contrast on the right before, on the left, after. We're near the entrance of the cave, or exit I should say. And you can see, here's some more artifacts of these hewn rocks. Some of them are round. You can see the progression. Some of them, they started and looks like they had plans to make it round like a wheel. There you see another one, a little more round, but still rough on the edges. And then that one looks like the finished product right there. We see some round indentions carved out. Looks like they carved out some wheels or round rocks that they were going to use for what purpose, I don't know. Here's another 
another area, similar features. Looks like this one here, they have it outlined right there, that circular outline there. It looks like they're going to carve out some sort of round cylinder type stone. And then we see some that are half carved, three quarters carved. You can see the progression, really interesting. We see some rectangular blocks. Maybe they used those for steps already carved out. Some steps, looks like a hallway here. So this is the outside of this cave. And it looks like it wasn't even a natural cave that they utilized. They it looks like they made the cave because all these entryways are perfect rectangles and squares and looks like they just chiseled their way into this huge rock. The smaller top row of caves undoubtedly has some carved Buddha statues in them as well. It seems to be the purpose of all of these smaller caves and larger caves. Every size of them has some sort of carved image, Buddhas inside. Some of these pigeons have begun to nest in those, but those are not accessible by the public. Interesting if we would be able to go and see what's inside those. here describes some old carriage tracks and we're talking old as in 403 BC to 228 BC it talks about these dynasties and they have this section blocked off preserving these carriage tracks in stone a little bit better view here with the light. So you can see these deep ruts, these grooves in the stone. Those are ancient carriage tracks. This is not mud, this is stone.
This is the Nine Dragon Wall, built in the 11th century. There's nine different dragons on this wall. The detail on this wall is amazing. Here's a closer view of this wall. Well, I don't know how they did all these details. You can see that's not just painted on, it's almost like some sort of mosaic type three-dimensional artwork. This is a very, very poor, we're talking dirt poor countryside village outside of Detong. You can see a bunch of buildings just in shambles, abandoned, some of them occupied. And this here is a public bathroom. What do you think it looks like? Here it is. This is a men's bathroom. See these slots in the concrete? That's where you relieve yourself. No plumbing, just goes down to the ground. Thankfully, I don't think it's used very often, so believe it or not, there's not much of an odor here, but this is it. This is what is called a cave house in this countryside of very poor, very poor area of China. They have these what are called cave houses and these are no longer occupied here but this is what it looks like. We'll go inside. And you can see why they call it a cave house. You're basically living in a cave. I guess they made these out of bricks and rocks and things. Some of them are actually built into a literal cave-like uh, structure on the side of a cliff. I guess this raised platform here was the sleeping quarters. Here we have something that almost looks like a window, but it's not. I guess they maybe put some sort of oven here or just used it for storage. I don't know. Maybe this is where the TV was. Just joking. We have another doorway structure here but you can see that it's not connecting to the adjacent cave house which we're going to go into next this one is right next door So we are inside a cave house. It looks like this may have been some sort of oven. Then we have 
Another raised platform, which undoubtedly was the bed. This doorway here, locked with bricks. And you can see underneath this layer of something that was made from, it looks like grass, and then it looks like this was made with mud and grass. Almost kind of like adobe houses, I'm thinking. This looks like maybe it was the clothesline. We have a lady here, an old friend of the family who actually used to live in here, so she could tell us exactly what all of these were used for. More remnants of things that they used for hanging. Ah, okay. So we're in, I guess, a little more of a modern cave house. It's not a cave house, is it? Mm. Sort, of. <laughs> sort of. So this is the stove. Oh, wow, there's hot coals and everything in there. It's all warm. So it acts as uh, a stove and a heater at the same time. So the stove is connected to the bed foundation, which is... Boy, that is solid. Solid concrete. And then this is considered the mattress. Oh, right here. Oh, yeah. So in the wintertime, it heats up this bed. What's the mattress? It's just a little bit of foam? Or? Oh, okay. Small mats, carpet. Very firm. <laughs> okay. See, that's their bed and pillow. Yeah. Right. And that's their eating table. Mm -hmm. They put table in the no. middle of the bed. No. And, and this thing. Is this another oven yeah. here? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, Just to give you an idea of the contrast in some parts of China, you see how it's just very poor. Yet at the same time, they do have technology when it comes to other things. This is a solar powered street light, street lamp on a dirt road in this dirt poor village. So these are real cave houses here and these are still inhabited, some of them. They built this into the side of this cliff. They actually dug into it and made a cave and then made a house out of the cave. So you can see they do have walls and some roof and some doors, but the interior is actually dug into the side of this cliff, which is basically a cave that they made. They literally live in a cave house. Here's their next door neighbor. Called. Although this one is unoccupied, but. right next to that door that we saw. There's a handful of these right on this view of these cave houses. And this, I thought it was some sort of oven. It's actually a dog house. Here's a wall in front of the cave houses and this believe it or not is the gate these branches being held up by a, some sort of spring device. Okay, our tour guide is allowing us to go into a, a little more of a modern cave house it's still considered a cave house <laughs> Ni hao. Oh. so you can see they still have the Platform, very firm bed, concrete slab. Here's really beautiful kitty cat. And they have a dog in the front yard with a little dog house. We have Chairman Mao. Mao Zedong. A lot of the old 
timers still reverence him a great deal. Here's a stove. <laughs> and again, connected to the bed, which keeps the bed warm. TV set. <laughs> and then we have a doorway that leads to what? What room is this used for? Oh, no actually. It's just a spare room for storage. Some modern of appliances. Oh, okay. It almost looks like a kitchen. And the floor is just uh, like a concrete brick floor. <laughs> so, this is the general tower, one of the main features of the wall. You can see a lot of it is in ruins. There used to be uh, another level above this, and then these circular disc shape artifacts on the floor here I was told used to support some poles or pillars this again is the general tower or at least what's left of it Uh, I think this is a man uh, so place because Jinshan means the golden mountain. This is a small uh, golden mountain. This is a big. So this is supposed to be what right here? Yeah, before they use some golden. So this for build yeah. for build they built we use gold no just small gold uh -huh. uh, just the little gold the two two right yes two 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 this is actually the small gin shelling tower. You can see on this side wall on the right, there's all these small window openings for shooting arrows at the invading Mongols. You can see these all on the side of these walls here, all along the Great Wall. 
can see a little indention on the bottom. Some of them are still more intact where it's a small hole there where they could put their crossbows, I was told. And then going up this tower, up the steps, this is really interesting. Some strategizing went into the planning and architecture of this tower here. Up these steps, it leads to what's called a false entrance. It dead ends into a brick wall and both sides is brick wall. The plan or the idea behind this was that the Mongols, if they made it up to the wall, if they ran up to these steps to try to get to the tower, they would run into this dead end where they could be shot at from people up out of those windows up there. The actual entrance is on the side here, a little detour which they would have bypassed most likely that was the plan at least Jin ceiling tower <laughs> windows on every side <laughs> Jinshan Tower, established 1569. This is certainly an unrestored section of the Great Wall. Steps with one of the guard towers or watchtowers. It actually doesn't even have a name, what I was told. But this is unbelievable. Very photogenic. rest of the wall continues on to more towers. There's another fascinating section of the Great Wall. Some steps leading up to another tower. Descending down back to the parking lot, and this is a side view of the wall. This is probably what it would have looked like had the Mongols come and gotten this close to it. Up the side of this mountain.
我妈说别跑了，跑我叫你干什么？不要你跑。Hada, hada, hada, hada. Sese. Here's some of the whips that they're using. Man, it just cracks and sounds like a shotgun. Louder than a firecracker, some of these. The one guy really had it down. Minibus taxi. Must experience the minibus taxi. really crowded in here. Definitely no more than two people. See that little fan there?
Beijing Subway Station. Rush hour. Digital ads outside the subway as we're traveling.
Right now I'm in Beijing. It's during the day, but you can see the sky is very gray looking. It's not so much because it's cloudy, it's because of the pollution there. This is a poor air quality day, and I am actually wearing a mask on this day. This uh, air looks kind of gray, smoky, almost like there's a forest fire nearby. But it is the pollution from the coal factories, not in the city, but outside of the city. And then it blows in, gets trapped by the geographical location here. And if you don't have the right wind speeds and the right wind directions, then it gets like this. Ironically, I'm, or not ironically, but uh, incidentally, I'm standing next to this drainage canal and it's empty, it stinks like sewage and you can see the amount of trash that was in this or still is I should say but it looks like it all got collected on the side once this thing drained not a pretty sight but you come across things like this in China. Not all of China is like this, obviously, but this is not uncommon in the cities. Hada, <laughs> hada. Wow. Ah. Ah. This is a modern public Chinese toilet. We call them in English squat pots or squatty potty. I think you can see why. You flush it with your foot. Notice there's no toilet paper in here. It doesn't mean that you use your hands, it means that you're supposed to bring your own toilet paper.